molecule called calcine. And this is a relatively impermeable molecule with about 363 Dalton, uh, the molecular weight that's similar to a typical chemotherapy. And I'll just direct you through this. These are microscopic images, 10x, looking at four tumor cells here, GBM tumor cells. And these, this is control condition with no infrasound and just by looking by light microscopy. And if we go across, this is a, the, uh, looking at the fluorescent image of these same cells. So you can see in these four, there's a little bit of the fluorescent dye that passes into these cells under the control conditions. But when we apply infrasound, the intensity of this fluorescence increases, and so you can see that it's increasing the uptake of this fluorescent dye into these cells, indicating the membrane is being more permeant. So this is one experiment. This is um, a, a histogram uh, using a flow cytometer to be to get a more quantitative measure of that. So basically, this is looking at 10,000 events of, of of measuring these increases. So here is 10,000 events with no infrasound and the median of fluorescence is here. And so you see a shift towards more fluorescence in these cells. So this is very exciting. We made it halfway. We've, we've, we're seeing that we are seeing an impact on the, on the membrane permeability with infrasound. So before moving to the second hypothesis, we wanted to get a little bit better handle on what was coming out of this Qi machine. Because at this, to this stage, we were just pressing a button, and there was a little red light saying that something was coming out there, but we couldn't hear it, and we really just were trusting that this was making the Qigong-like stuff. So we, we got an engineer to come in and, and um, uh, basically do a spectral analysis. And, and so we were pleased that we, we did indeed see infrasound. That w looking, uh, you know, coming out of the machine was, was in this, here's, again, the 20 hertz cutoff. So we saw here between 7 and, and 15 with some peaks in between. So we, uh, we forged ahead. Uh, oh, wait, before we forged ahead, there was, there was one subtlety to the, to the Qigong machine. And uh, let me go back and you can see. So there were these peaks and there was this differences. It was basically a dynamic frequency. And also, the, the, you know, Richard Lee, the scientific director at the institute that produces the machine, I spent some time talking to him. They feel very strongly the dynamic component of this is very important to, to protect against biological adaptation. So we thought, well, this is really fascinating. And then you know, when, before we move forward, we wanted to be sure that we were going to be applying the, the, the best kind of Qigong, uh, I'm sorry, the best kind of uh, infrasound. So we wanted to test that. So we made our own Qigong generator, our own infrasound generator. <laughs> and I am going to just get you to focus just on this cluster. This, this is a box and whisker plot. And just to orient you to it, we'll just stick with this cluster right here. It's going to be, you know, we have data from four different human cell lines that are derived from four different GBM tumors to look for the generalizability of the, the results. Uh, but just if we look at just one tumor here, U87, the results of this box are from the dynamic output of the Qigong machine. And here are the results from our infrasonic generator at 8.5, just a single frequency, 11.6 and 15. Now, if you're not familiar with box, box and whisker plots, they're, they're meant to give a depiction of all the data. And uh, basically, the, the mean is shown, uh, you know, the, the convergence of the hourglass shape. And the top of the box will be the 70, 75th percentile, the 25th percentile on the bottom. The top of the whiskers and 98th percentile on the bottom is the 2%. And any outliers, er, any and every outlier are shown with a cross. And, and just to, to, to take away from it is you want to look for the boxes that, that don't overlap. And, and we really found that most of our boxes did overlap. There were occasions where, where uh, we would get it looks like an effect. But the overall message from this that we found is that for this outcome, for membrane permeability with the infrasonic exposure, we could pretty much say that we get, um, we get this increase in, in the fluorescent uptake, whether we use the dynamic frequency or the single frequency. 
Another thing to, to note about, uh, in some cases, the box is not overlapping, is that for the different cell types, there's a l there can be some differences. So some of the reaction is, uh, is it's not completely generalizable. So now we move to hypothesis two, and we're looking. We're going to look at the response to a chemotherapy. So I'll take you through the title slowly first. We chose cisplatin, a very common chemotherapy. It's a DNA damaging agent. And our outcome measure was apoptosis. And this is a, it's programmed cell death. It's a very common outcome measure in cancer research. And it's important because, it's an important outcome for cancer because you, it's the cell basically undergoing cell suicide rather than necrosis, which can lead to inflammation and be more problematic. So a good chemotherapy will induce apoptosis so that cancer cells will just nice, you know, package up and, and go away. So to look at apoptosis, we, we stain, we had two different stains, and these are the results, again, of a flow cytometer. There are four panels for four different conditions. So we'll get, you know, again, focus up here just to orient you to the graph. Therefore, this is the control condition with no infrasound and no cisplatin. So you can see that the healthy cells, this is where they live on this kind of a plot in this lower left quadrant. And they live here because they don't stain for annexin 5, and this is a stain that will pick up whenever a particular lipid will flip its orientation on the, on the membrane, and it's an indicator of the early stages of apoptosis, or programmed cell death. So, so these healthy cells do not move along the x-axis because they're not, they don't have this flipping of a membrane that indicates they've gone into the early stages of apoptosis. This axis measures propidium iodide, which is a vital dye which will be allowed into the cell at a late stage of, of cell death, regardless of whether it's apoptosis or not. So if we just look at these quadrants, what you'd see is healthy cells here, and then when we, when we treat them with uh, chemotherapy, you see uh, many of the population, this is 24 hours later, moving over and being stained as early apoptotic, and then also moving up into this late stage cell death. So you can see that you know, at 24 hours, there were some that were in the beginning of their program of death. Some had already progressed until late stage, and here's where debris is left. They're, these are com you know, completely dead. So this was control, and as I showed, uh, this is where cisplatin treatment alone, and you can see this death. And then down here, cis infrasound treatment alone um, is pretty much indistinguishable from the the control condition. So there we have the demonstration of non-toxic nature of the infrasound in this model. And we did see, there you can see there are some more dots over here indicating that on top of the cisplatin effect we were seeing more. So these are results, and again these are 10,000 events. These are results from one experiment comparing the four conditions. And so to, to look at, um, again, four different cell lines and this represents the data from three independent experiments for each of the lines compared to the control conditions. So again, with infrasound alone, you just saw this uh, kind of noise, not, real, not any significant difference in terms of programmed cell death, rate pitosis. This, this is platin caused death, and in each case we saw an increase in the amount of death caused uh, by the combination. So this, is, this was uh, very exciting for us. This is what we were looking for, that we could see an, an impact of this non-toxic agent to make the chemotherapy more effective. So one more thing we wanted to ask was how much of the membrane effect, could, how much of, could that explain of our cisplatin effect? And um, this linear regression gave us, uh, it's, you know, admittedly it's only three points, but gave us uh, the confidence that uh, we could talk about a, a mechanism to, to please the NIH funders and say that indeed there was a tight correlation between this. And, and uh, in addition to pleasing the funders, it also perhaps a clinical application is that because we saw some variation in the, the cells derived from different tumors, this, this indicates that just a simple dye, just, just looking at the ability of a, a simple dye to be pushed in the cell with infrasound might predict for a patient whether this would be appropriate for them in terms of assisting in their chemotherapy treatment. So back to external Qigong. 
um, you know, we, we try to think, think back 